All right, I've got a great show for you today. Our government has lied to us, spied to us, derided us, and left us for dead. And that was all just before lunch. Uh, but I have a great uh, guest today. I have filmmaker Jeff Hayes. Jeff, thanks for being on the show today. Thanks for having me, Stephen. So you've done movies about the truth on 9-11, uh, the truth on Dr. Anthony Fauci. You have a new movie out that you're going to let my audience watch for free on RFK Jr. Uh, and we'll discuss that in a, a minute. But uh, you've taken on some of the most controversial topics in the last 20 years and made films out of them. How shocked were you to see Elon Musk buy Twitter and then allow investigative journalists to, to comb through the files and share that the United States government has been lying to us, manipulating accounts, silencing dissenting voices, cutting off political enemies. Uh, what, what were your thoughts on that whole story? Well, you know, Elon Musk, I'm a huge fan of his. I have two Tesla cars. I have Tesla solar panels on my house. I love the stuff that he does. When, when the... Uh, Elizabeth Warren went after him and said, hey, billionaires need to be paying their fair share. The previous year, Elon Musk paid $11.6 billion in taxes. The budget for the entire IRS is $12 billion. And here's one man who supposedly is not paying his fair share, literally came within $400 million of funding the entire IRS. I think he's you know paying his fair share. When he bought Twitter, I I, I wasn't surprised. I was hopeful. You know, Elon Musk truly believes in free speech, um, and which is difficult to do there. You know, especially with a a company like X or Twitter because they're international and international laws. A lot of countries do not allow for free speech. What he exposed was we don't either. And our laws state that we do. And now they're having to, to hold to the letter of the law. It is a risky gamble. I loved when, when he was profane and sat there on that stage with Bob Iger, the president of Disney in the audience and says, well, wait a minute. You guys are trying to bribe me with money to you know to, to get rid of free. And it's like, it really is, yeah, we probably shouldn't try to bribe the richest man in the world, maybe offer him something he doesn't have. You know, so I love that he's taking this stand. You know, when I did some shows about vaccines, my accounts were barred on on Facebook, they were barred on Twitter, uh, on YouTube. And and literally, we had no place other than direct contact with my audience that we could post any opposing views. Um, that is certainly not the spirit on what you know that this country was was built on. And it, you really, the most absurd example to me was when. Twitter barred the current president at that time when he was President Trump was still in office and they barred President President Trump from posting. Um, and and the 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 mainstream media applauded this. The, you know, these were from New York Times used to join lawsuits saying we we demand the right to free press and free speech. And now they're applauding someone losing their right to free speech. Um, so God bless Elon Musk for, you know, he's like all of us, he's not perfect in his life. And I, I wouldn't want to be him, but I'm sure grateful that he exists. Yeah. Uh, I know you've built many businesses in the past. Um, Kevin O'Leary of Shark Tank said that if Donald Trump is guilty of handing over documents and then a third party company assigned by a bank comes up with a valuation that the bank agrees to, then every real estate owner and investor in America is guilty. How, how dangerous is it to weaponize the government against a political opponent? You know, this is not the first time this has happened. Um, you know, it, it goes back to a fight with 
um, with John Adams and Thomas Jefferson when Thomas Jefferson was the vice president of the United States. And, and literally Adams had thrown editors of newspapers into jail and for speaking out against the war um, at, at that time. And Jefferson, once he was, he won the election, was made president, released the editors. So, but it was under the Sedition Act. And then this, you know, we, we passed the Sedition Act again early in the uh, 20th century. So we think these things have never occurred. You know, it, it occurred with Andrew Jackson. Um, you know, it, it, as you look at history, you know, we think, oh my gosh, this is the first time democracy is, we've always had to defend democracy. We've always had to defend free speech. And, you know, as, as Bobby Kennedy said in my film, there's never been a time when the people that were for censoring were the good guys. And history will prove that out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, speaking of him, uh, I think Robert F. Kennedy Jr., he was one of the first people that Biden and the White House tried to silence. It, it, I think it might have even been in the first week of his new presidency. But since then, RFK Jr. has been kicked off social media. He's been demonized, slandered, lied about. Uh, they're not providing him uh, secret service, even though he's polling high enough uh, in the election. Uh, do you see RFK Jr. as one of the most hated and silenced people in the country right now? Well, he's, you know, I made the movie, The Real Anthony Fauci, the, the documentary of the book that Bobby wrote. That book has sold a million copies its first year. It uh, has 2,200 citations. If there was anything in that book that was not true, he would have been sued by now. There's been no lawsuits. Uh, we made that film. At one point, I had a, an editor in California who was sending me a 10-minute clip for me to review that he had edited. He put it on his private password-protected YouTube channel just for me to review. By the time I opened the email, YouTube had taken it down for having objectionable content. And this is on a private YouTube channel that was password-protected, not public-facing. And you, like literally, we were never able to upload even a clip of that film to to YouTube. His name was synonymous. And, and yes, it was the first week. It was actually the first day of Biden's presidency that they told Twitter that they needed to uh, get rid of his communication. And because of misinformation, although every post that he had was cited and many times we're just quoting CDC documents. They've never pointed out to one piece of information that wasn't true. It boils down to if you're not repeating the government orthodoxy, they're going to do everything they can to shut down th that speech. And it's up to us to make sure to amplify that those voices to make sure that that people have the right to make up their own minds to make up based on all the facts not just what um the, the, the is government approved speech yeah okay so while while you were making the real dr anthony fauci you got to know rfk jr really well you guys have become friends and you have realized that, that this is just an incredible human being and and you want people to get to know who he is, what he stands for, his family values. Uh, but why Why did you end up making this movie? And was there any part of making it that really jumped out to you? Yeah, I, I started this process long before he decided to run for president. Uh, Bobby in 2018 gave me a copy of a book he wrote called American Values. And it was his story and where he learned what he learned from his family. And I set the book on my shelf for two years and never cracked it. And one day I pulled it off the shelf and then read it and I was enthralled. It was a, I thought I've had an interesting life. He's had the most interesting life of anyone I've ever heard of. And I started negotiating with CAA for the rights to that book. And while I was doing that, a writer named Dick Russell wrote a book called The Real RFK Jr. And so I, I very quickly optioned the rights to that book and then executed the option to make a documentary of that. That book was also started before Bobby 
uh, was running for president. What what I've done with this film, Stephen, is is I think I've made the most important political film of this election cycle, and there's not anything about politics in it, and there's not anything about policy in it. It is literally just a biography, and its purpose is to counter the the mischaracterization of somebody who does not deserve that treatment. I don't care who anybody votes for it. You know, like right now I'm promoting the film. And so I'm on Newsmax. I mean, you know, if it wasn't for right wing or conservative radio shows and, and TV shows, I wouldn't have anybody to talk to about this because the left is not going to entertain this at, at all. And, and so I was on with a, a, a radio host yesterday. He says, look, I'm a Trump fan, but I loved your movie and I loved the the portrait that you created of this man. To me, that that's a win. If somebody will watch this and see who it is that they've been lied to by the New York Times, by mainstream media, and you can, you know, I'm a little old, Repub I mean, a little old libertarian, I'm probably to the right of most Republicans. That's not the issue. The, the issue is uh, we have a right to know who this man is, especially when he's been attacked by our, our government and the big media and, and big tech. There's yeah. some reason to attack him. Yeah. Well, you, you shared the movie uh, with us and we went through it and it's just beautifully done. The stories are incredible. And no, it's not a political movie. It literally is just uh, here's somebody from this family dynasty, the Kennedy family, and taking those values and, and going out and living uh, the best life that you can. Uh, one, one final thing that I wanted to bring up with you is, um, you know, one of his big messages is that the United States is trapped. Americans are trapped because the government agencies that are supposed to protect us are, have, have been captured. They call it corporate capture. D does the film cover anything like that, um, that that we would see? As in, in his 40 year career as an environmental lawyer, the, you know, he fought and it's interesting because the the environmentalist would attack him because he wasn't environmental enough and the big business would attack him because he would cost them money. And what he has always said is, is that the real solution to the environmental issue is capitalism. And capitalism can solve these problems, but a part of capitalism is you pay for the, the cost of, of your product and creating a product, but leaving an environmental mess that then the country or the local city around that mess has to pay to clean up. That's not capitalism, that's crony capitalism. And so we we do go into what happened like with Smithfield Foods and with the, the, the Hudson River, where these companies through political machinations were, were raping and pillaging and then leaving us, the, the taxpayers, with the bill. Uh, Regulatory captures, you know, Democrats always wanted big government so they could stand against big business. They never imagined what would happen when big government became a subsidiary of big business. I am a dyed-in-the-wool capitalist, but this is not capitalism. This is is not playing by the rules. It's not fair and it's pervasive. Yeah. Okay, so uh, for the next couple of days, you're going to make this video uh, available for free to my members. Uh, where where should I send them to see that? Yeah, just go to the rfkmovie.com, the rfkmovie.com, and, and uh, they can sign up. They'll be sent a link to, to view the film. And I think it's eight more days they'll be able to watch it for free. And I am so proud of this. It, it's, um, you know, I, I've, I've been shortlisted for an Academy Award. I've done some nice films. I'm, I've never been as proud of anything as I am this particular film. Oh, that's great. Well, thank you for making it and uh, helping us to see who this person is, giving us the tools to push back on our government and improve our country. And I'll make sure to leave a link down below. But thank you so much. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Stephen.